if you've ever ripped the crotch in your pants, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If it happened to you on patrol, especially with those ACUs, make sure you give it a good old like and comment. The comment section is, as usual, out of control, and I don't understand it at all. And I'm pretty sure that people don't actually watch my videos. They just get in there and kind of keep me on play while they comment. And that's okay as well. I'm okay with that. Gentlemen, ladies, attack helicopters. The biggest support of the channel right now is Gun Mag Warehouse. Get in there, get gun magazines. They're pretty sick. Uh, Daniel is pretty cool. He helps run that site, and they're good guys. If, <laughs> if you've ever wanted to wear the clothing that I wear, today is your lucky day. Beyond Clothing, if you're not familiar with Beyond Clothing, they uh, pretty much issue all cold weather gear and now uniforms to uh, many special operations units. It was one of the first uh, weather layers I was ever issued in the military. And then uh, later on, we started getting their uniforms and their combat uniforms, and they are slick. There's a link right below where you can use discount code Grantham, 10% off site-wide, and they make extremely high-quality gear that I highly, highly recommend. If you're not looking to spend that much on clothing, you always have Vertex, or if you need ammo, LAX ammo. Gentlemen, ladies, attack helicopters, once again, uh, making sure I hit every gender out there. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about a very special rifle near and dear to my heart, the Mark 12. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, the Mark 12. So what's funny about the Mark 12 is my knowledge only goes so far. I never use the Mark 12 uh, in service. Uh, I've only shot it outside as a civilian, which is one of the great things about it, being a civilian in the United States, that we can own all these awesome weapons. But the Mark 12, 12 really is interesting. So if you're not familiar with the Mark 12, it was first um, fielded around 2002. Now, there are iterations that came out after that and before that, but kind of the Mark 12 SPR, Special Purpose Rifle, that we know and love came out around 2002, and it really changed a lot of things. Now, looking at it now in 2019, you look at it and you'd be like, wow, this is pretty much a really heavy version of a, you know, a rifle I could build for much cheaper and much lighter and everything, but at the time, it was a very forward-thinking concept, and a lot of the concepts that were pioneered uh, in this uh, rifle were later adapted to many of the common features that we see in ARs today. So let's talk a little bit about how this came about. So the Mark 12, now be clear, I'm not forgotten weapons, I'm not gonna be, I'm not a historian or anything like that, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but the Mark 12 came about as needing a stopgap, something that filled the role between the M4 and the M24, the M24 being a bolt action uh, a rifle that can fire pretty long, long distances very accurately. So many would argue the M110 fills that role, the M110 being an AR pattern rifle that fires a 308. And it's very effective. However, the Mark 12 really took off. And that's due to a combination of extremely tight tolerances on its builds compared to the M110 and also due to the ammunition. And Whenever I talk, um, well, before I do any video, I, I have like this group of experts so that I ping off of anywhere from guys in certain need to know agencies and certain need to know groups, all these different types of people. And I pull them all in and I talk to each and every one of them about the concepts I'm gonna talk about in this video. Because again, my knowledge only goes so far. I wanna make sure that I'm on point, I'm not missing anything. And with each of those guys, I call them and they're like, okay, what are we talking about this week? And I'm like, well, I'm gonna be doing the Mark 12. And they're like, dude, no way the Mark 12. Love the Mark 12, and I'm like, all right, can we calm down? They're like, no, I love it. And the reason that many people um, love the Mark 12 who served with it was because, yes, it did lack a lot of that long range capability that the M110 had, but at the same time, with the 77 grain open tip match ammunition that was used and that was issued with these rifles, um, you could carry so much more ammunition than a 308 gun, which those of you who've carried uh, combat loadouts of 308 5.56 can attest to. And because of that, in their minds, it made it a much more effective rifle in a variety of situations. So it's for that reason that they have fallen in love with the Mark 12. Many of them have their own clones of the Mark 12, and it's from one of those people that I have borrowed the Mark 12 from my good buddy, BB, who works over at uh, Grey Goes Precision. So without kind of getting too much more in the weeds, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what makes this rifle up. So the Mark 12 is essentially what is a heavily modified AR platform. So let's go ahead and let's take a look 
at what makes this rifle what it is. So this rifle is completely clone correct, except for the low receiver. My boy BB went ahead and made it a Grey Ghost Precision because uh, he has to rep his company, you know, I, I get that. So what we have here starting at the front is we have an Ops Inc. 12th model suppressor. So these are awesome suppressors and the whole reason they were chosen is because every suppressor is going to cause a deviation of where the rounds would to land. Essentially, it changes its point of impact. The Ops Inc. 12th model suppressor had the least of the suppressors that were tested, which is why it's used. Now, these are very interesting as far as how, how they mount. So they are a direct thread. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and screw this. Try not to look awkward doing it. Everybody always looks awkward doing it. There's a little bit of patterning about two thirds of the way up that makes it easier to grip it and unscrew it. I fired around 400, 500 rounds through this without cleaning it and it did start getting a little bit carbon locked but it wasn't too bad. Anyhow, you can see uh, where the threads are right there. This is a nice little break right here and we can see where this collar right here um, helps with the alignment. So what is it like shooting the Ops Inc. suppressor? Well, it's actually pretty dang nice now compared to more modern suppressors or not even modern but like the surefire socom rc and rc2 um there is a lot <laughs> like a lot of gas blowback it's pretty painful to fire this thing at anything more than a tempo of about one round every two seconds and oh, fuck. i got gas out being that it was used as a marksman type rifle that doesn't make sense but nonetheless there are suppressors that do just as well in my opinion that have a better locking system uh, that have uh, you know don't have a, ch a change to the point of impact and you know do all that good stuff but uh, don't have nearly as much uh, gas blowback like the Surefire uh, SOCOM series or the SIG cans well obviously newer cans like SIG and Q do but it is a pretty awesome suppressor it does a great job for what it was designed for back in the day and you have to realize that um, you know, when this was fielded, there wasn't a whole lot of suppressors out there. So this was a pretty cool design and concept. This is all mounted to a Douglas premium air gauged match barrel. They are 18 inches and they are absolutely phenomenal. So they were specifically made, this entire rifle is made for 77 grain open tip, tip match ammunition. Uh, essentially the Mark 262, Mod 0, Mod 1, depending on the type of projectile used. With that ammunition, your accuracy is roughly sub-MOA. Pretty damn good. So this rifle can easily be pushed to around 600 meters plus. Of course, you are running some problems. 5.56 doesn't have a whole lot of umph at that distance, but due to the amount of ammunition they can carry. But from a lot of my friends who went overseas, they had no problems with the effectiveness of the Mark 262 when they had to use it. So pretty cool right there. Um, we have a front sight post right here. We have a Harris bipod. Um, there were several different bipods that were used. This is one of the common ones that was typically used. Um, of course, there are new ones nowadays. Okay, we're getting over to the handguard. So the handguard is something that you see a lot of nowadays, which is a free floating handguard. And you say, no big deal. Or you maybe don't know what a free floating handguard is. So a free floating handguard is a handguard that does not touch the barrel. That allows the barrel to flex and do what it needs to and greatly improves accuracy. Now, at the time, this was a very, well, not so much a novel concept. It obviously wasn't the first instance of a free float barrel. This, of course, was not the first instance of a free float handguard, but um, for a lot of people who it was issued to, this was the first chance they got to use an AR pattern rifle with a free floating handguard. And so now they are, of course, very common, but we can, to some extent or another, thank the Mark 12 for that. Now, on this particular build, you see that we have the, rank, the rail running the entire length of the rifle. Now, this wasn't true of every Mark 12 out there. Of course, with different rails, like the Knight's rail, you didn't have that. Now, we have the correct scope rings. We have the arms number 22 mounts. And in here, we have a correct optic for the optic that is typically mounted, which is a TS-30. Now, there are <clears throat> several different optics that are used and nowadays if these are still being employed you have more modern optics used now this one is a 2.5 to 10 it's made by Leupold uh, they're fairly hard to get your hands on and this one is specifically the exact optic that was made and used for the Mark 12 this optic does say Mark 12 mod 1 it is calibrated for a 5.56 millimeter 
uh, with a 77 grain projectile. Now in my time shooting Mark 262 through this particular rifle, um, the scope was pretty much dead on the money. Now a 2.5 power to eight um, seems kind of odd, but at the time, of course, innovative. Of course, low power variable optics are huge nowadays. But again, back when, when you had red dots or an ACOG, this was a very novel concept. Now, this optic is, of course, awesome. I have no problems with it, but it is um, eclipsed by modern optics nowadays. But nonetheless, I could easily make shots to 600 with this particular optic. So pretty cool little piece of, um, I hate to say it, but history. It's weird that 2002 is now considered history, but there we have it. Okay, the upper receiver is Colt um, with a Colt um, bolt in bolt carrier group. Moving down, we have the lower. This is a thing that's not so clone correct. It is a Grey Ghost Precision. They make great stuff. Uh, BB's got to rep them. Now, the trigger is correct. The trigger is a CAC two stage trigger. They are very nice. Now, there are several different triggers that were used, um, CAC being among them. They did later move to Geisley triggers, but this CAC trigger is correct. Let's go ahead and let's ghost it. That's what we always do. So. We have a little bit of play right here, about maybe three, two millimeters of play. We're just gonna go ahead and figure out, go ahead and put your finger right over mine. Let's go ahead and send it. Nice. Okay, the reset, very short. Maybe a three, high threes, low fours. Feels amazing. And I don't care about doing like a, a trigger weight pull gauge. I just wanna, I like to feel it, you know? That is a nice trigger. So trigger has been excellent. Um, I had no problems firing that thing at distance. We do have a LMT stock on this now. Of course, LMT, B5 stocks, any type of um, stocks worked. On the very early Mark 12s, you did have that normal A2, A1 type of rifle stock. So just realize, depending on who had it, you know whether it was Navy SEALs, high-speed dudes, and Green Berets, Probably something a little cooler. Now, if you were a Marine, you issued this, and this was, of course, one of the more forward-thinking um, weapons I think the Marine Corps uh, deployed. They mostly had the rifle length stocks, and those are pretty sick. And a lot of the Marines I've talked to are very fond of the Mark 12s that they fielded. Again, suppressors, especially among Marine Corps units back when these were fielded, were very rare, uh, much more rare than they are today. So it was a huge... Um, advantage to these individuals to have a rifle with a suppressor in an urban environment. All right, as far as magazines are concerned, feeds from a detachable 30 round box magazine, just like any other type of AR. Pretty slick build overall. I really have enjoyed my time shooting this. They are a little bit heavy, but man, is it cool to shoot it. Um, should you get one? There are many companies that make reproductions, Brownells, BCM, all that type of stuff. It depends on how clone correct you want to get. PRI themselves, who make the handguard, and many of the components makes their own clone as well. So find which one's going to work for you. It's definitely a cool piece of history. If you owned one, you shot one, or you used one in the service, freaking awesome. Maybe get yourself a clone there. Here's the thing, though. Like everything, we know that... Um, None of this matters if you don't have training, right? The best tool is going to matter nothing if you don't know how to shoot it. So make sure that you get training out there as cool as your gun is. And this is a sick, sick rifle. So get out there and get training from great companies. We have Esoteric. We have um, Helio Strategic, probably my dad. Cogworks, Bear Solutions. You have guys like Core Vision. A lot of great up-and-comers. Don't forget Tony Cowden. Get out there, get training. I know you guys are always asking me, you know, who's a great trainer in North Carolina or in this area or in that area? And, and I want to do all the research, research that I can, but realize well, most of these trainers travel around the country. So try to catch them when they're in your area and get to a class. I'd highly recommend it. You might find me at one of those classes. Uh, I try to get around a little bit. I came out wrong. But anyhow, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. We have more great, great content coming. And I appreciate you guys. And that's all I have for you. Okay, last thing I have for you. If you don't eat kale, you're wrong. <laughs> you guys have gotten this far. You know what we're going to talk about next. Big Daddy Unlimited. It's like Costco, but for guns. People are getting crazy. Low prices right now, apparently. I haven't checked that. I've been very busy with military stuff. But get in there. Check it out. Uh, link's right below. Tell them Grantham sent you. Gentlemen, ladies, everybody, I want to take a quick moment to thank you. Uh, I feel very blessed to have your viewership and to have you guys watch my videos um, and how much the channel has grown. So you guys have been great to me. Uh, I've got some great content coming for you. I'm going to be busy, very, very busy this next half year, but I will continue putting out content for you because I love you guys. So here's a big thank you to all of you for making me uh, making all this possible. 
Take care, gentlemen, ladies, <laughs> whatever you identify as. I'm done.